Thank you very much for attending this session. We continue our discussion on the Lidl's law. Today, we apply to our very close vicinity. We apply to the time to degree of our students in our college, College of Business and Economics. Over the past seven years, the average number of incoming students per year to our college was 1,900. The average headcount was 6,600. On average, how long a student spend in this college? I have the throughput and I have the inventory. Throughput times flow time is equal to inventory and therefore 1,900 times flow time is equal to 6600. 3.47. Out of 1900 incoming student, different percentages belong to different four major uh, departments and the rest belong to other three departments. We have a total of seven departments. Also, we do have the hit count of each department. We want to compute the flow time of each department, the time a prototype student of each department spends in this department, in this call. Let's look at graphical representation. Here is what we have. We have Department of Accounting and IS, Department of Management, Marketing, Finance, and then we have three other departments of Systems and Operations Management, Business Law, and Economics. I do have the percentage of incoming students. 11% of incoming students belong to Department of Finance, 28% belong to Department of Accounting and Information Systems. I have all these percentages, but I don't have this one. Computing that one is quite simple. Summation should come out one. 28 plus 23 would be 51, 51, 62, 72, 78. Therefore, 22% is here. I also have the headcounts, headcounts of each department except Department of Finance. But I know that the total headcount is 6,600, so 1130, 1670, that would be 2,800. This makes it 4,000, 5,700 is for these for departments, so 900 is headcount of finance. Now I do have percentage of throughput for each department, and if I multiply them by this number, I will get the actual throughput in terms of students. I do have the headcount, I have throughput, and I have inventory, and I can apply the Lidl's law to compute the flow time of a prototype student in each of these four major departments and the other departments. And therefore, I have number of students here and headcount over there for each department. Out of three components of the Lidl's law, throughput, flow time, and inventory, I have two of them, finding the third one is a straightforward. By the way, in real life, do you know computation of which of these three items is more expensive? Throughput, inventory, or flow time? In both service environment and manufacturing environment. Throughput is quite straightforward because Every manufacturing system knows how many units they have produced. So the data is always there. It's not very difficult. 
In our college also, we know how many students have come in. Inventory is also not very expensive. All companies not only have their inventory on their computers, but they also have planned to have physical inventory every three to six months. The same is for our college. We always know what is the headcount of our college, how many students do we have. What is expensive is flow time, because if you want to compute the average flow time, we need to go to each individual student and find it out when he came in and when he left. In a manufacturing system, we should stamp all raw material that when they came in and when they left. So computing flow time is more expensive than computing throughput and inventory. That is why usually most of the service and production systems estimate the flow time based on the other two components of the Little's Law. Here we can easily, without going into individual students, we can estimate the average flow time of the student in each of these departments. We can create a table like this. We have throughputs of all departments. We have inventory of all departments. If we divide this one by this one, we will get flow time. Flow time in terms of what? In terms of year. Why? Because this is stated in terms of year. So if you look at here, 3.1, 3.89, 3.9, 4.3, 2.7. I will not bet on this 2.7 because the data that they provide us is not 100% correct. There are some uh, pieces mixed up. So that 2.7 may not be 100% correct. But in general, we have a good estimate of flow time of each of the departments. Using part B, show that this computation is correct. Quite straightforward, quite simple. We have flow time of each department. We have the percentages, sum, product, Some product of what? This column, multiply by that column, and it will give me 3.47, something that I computed it before. In this course, we really want to start thinking about throwing away our calculator is past. On average, 36% of the students of this college come in as freshmen. And that is why we call them first time freshmen, FTF. The rest are first time transfers. We call them FTT. Past data indicates that the time to graduation of the freshman student is at least twice of that of transfer students. Transfer students first spend two years in community college and then come in as junior students and are supposed to get graduated after two years. They are expected to get graduated in two years, but the uh, situation is not very normal over there. But based on previous data, we can assume that the time the freshman student spent in our college is twice of that of a transfer student, a first time transfer student. Now, based on these data, we want to estimate how long does it take for a transfer student to get graduated 
and then we multiply by two, and that is our estimate for first-time freshman students to get graduate. Or to leave the college. Because they may leave as graduates, or they may leave as, yes. Let's assume T has time to degree or time in college. It's not time to degree, as I said. It's time in college for first-time transfer student. And they are 64% of If that is the case, then time to graduation for first-time freshman students is 2T. And those people form 36%. So 64% spent T, 36% spent 2T in our college. And we know that this one multiplied by this plus this one multiplied by this is equal to 3 point 47 and therefore based on this data we can estimate lifetime transfer student in this college and lifetime a freshman student in this college 0.64t plus 0.362t is equal to 3.47 and therefore t is equal to 2.55 this is time to degree for first time transfer or time to leave our college for first time transfers. And when we multiply it by two, that is time to leave for first time freshman students. But unfortunately, there are other facts that we need also to add. Sadly, 35% of our students, about one third, of the first-come freshman students drop off. And sadly, 25% of first-time transfer students also drop out. Knowing these facts will tell us that time to degree is quite higher than time to leave because some of our students leave shortly. Now let's go through these unpleasant percentages. 35% of our first-time freshman students drop out. That is 35% of 36%, which is 12.6% or 0.126. The rest get graduated. So if I have 36 as my total first come freshman. And if these people drop out, then the rest that get graduated are here. Drop out, graduate. First time freshman, drop out, first time freshman, graduate. We can do the same computations for first time transfers. 25% of 64% drop out and the rest get graduated. So now we have these percentages. The time for this person is T. The time for this person is 2T because we said we can stay on the assumption that the first time freshman spend twice time than first time transfer. The time for these people, the estimated time for freshman students who drop out is 1.5 years, and for first-time transfers to drop out is 0.75 years. So we have all these components. We have percentages, and we do have the times. And we know that some product of these by this, of course, we cannot do some product function in Excel because T is not known. One equation, one unknown. 
and the result is equal to 3.47 as we have already computed. Time is multiplied by percentage. Time is multiplied by percentage and the summation is equal to this. One equation, one unknown, we can solve it for t and t will come out 3.37. That is average time to degree for transfer students. If we double it, that is average time to degree for freshman students, 6.68. So that is how we use Professor Liddell's uh, formula to estimate time to degree for our students. And we owe this knowledge to Professor Liddell, Professor Emeritus Liddell of UC Berkeley, the person who 50 years of Kyung theory remembers his work and we wish him a long uh, life. Now, let me know if you can solve this problem. Very simple, you should be able to find it out quickly. And the question is, what is the number of incoming students in this college based on this data? And how many students this college has? You may pause me and solve it quickly. Throughput times flow time is equal to inventory. I apply it. Here, flow time is four, throughput is 550. So 550 times four is 2200, and there's 2200. Therefore, we can simply add up these numbers and get the summation, which is 7,675. Here, again, throughput times flow time is equal to inventory. Flow time is 4.25. Throughput, we don't know. And inventory is 1,700. One equation, one unknown. And we get 400 over there. Then we add these numbers and we get 1950. Thank you very much for paying attention.